Hey, welcome back. Making a holster has always fascinated me. How do they get that perfect fit? Well, today we have something a little different for you. We got out of our shop and went to visit a holster company that makes Kydex style holsters for the pros and everyday folks. Adam Weber of Weber Tactical was kind enough to pull back the curtain and show us around and show us his shop. And we got to see the processes they use to make really nice gear. I didn't realize there was that many different ways to make a holster and all the work that goes into it. So let's dive in and take a look. This is, uh, you know, this is what we're known for on the competition world. This is our gamer line. Uh, that's a CZ Shadow 2 holster. You're matching everything. You know, your mag pouches can, ma can match to it. Uh, carbon fiber on the outside, you know, green on the inside. Um, Man, the fit and finish on that is really nice. The, uh, this is our Ferrari. So, um, you know, this one, it gets hand finished. Um, you know, we put a lot of love into these. Uh, it's a lot slower process. Here's an AR-15 mag pouch. So this is your mold, one of your molds? Yeah. That's, so That's wild. This is a compression mold. So we mold three ways, vacuum, dye, and compression. Okay. And um, so we're transitioning to all dye molding. Um, it just, the process is much faster. It's a lot more work on the front end on tooling, but once you get it dialed, um, you know, just like any shop, trying to remove as much human error as possible. So the basic process is the Kydex or Boltron material is heated up on a heat press and placed over a compression mold, which is machined from aluminum. It is then placed in a press until it cools, at which time the material retains the shape that it was pressed into. Next, they drill some registration holes so it can be attached on a fixture in the CNC. The CNC will then mill out the slots and mounting holes and trim the shape to its final form, making a perfect product every time. Some things to note on his CNCs. He's using a vacuum fixture to hold his forms and air assist to blow the chips away since standard dust collection doesn't work well for plastics. What's the benefit of Kydex over other mediums? Um, we use Boltron. So Boltron and Kydex are Nike Reebok. Um, Brands. Yes. Kleenex. The difference in Boltron is it has a, uh, it's more flexible and it has a, it doesn't crack as easily. So um, the benefits of Kydex over like leather um, are it doesn't hold any oil. And so most people are like, oh, that's plastic, it's gonna scratch my gun. Well, actually a leather holster will wear your gun faster because leather requires friction to hold it. So it's collecting all that oil, it's collecting the dirt, the dust, and so holding it because leather is oiled. Yeah. And so you're getting that. With plastic, it's clean. Um, any gun you holster is going to wear. I don't care, you know, sure. there's no, if it's a safe queen, don't put it in a holster. I mean, that's, you know, yeah. that's what it comes down to. Um, Plastic doesn't hold water, doesn't hold dirt. You can wipe it off. Uh, precision fit are more solid. So when your mounts are mounting, when you're mounting something to Kydex, it, because it doesn't have a, tear, a higher tear factor or a higher break factor, you get more strength in the mounts versus an injection. Sometimes you can just uh, grab it and rip it. It's where it gets weak at. Yeah. You used to have your molds made outside and then you've taken that under your wing now so you can control your destiny with your being able to machine your own tool. yeah yeah you know you remove the wait time and i'm not paying spindle time for it you know where you know if you're billing spindle time at 400 bucks an hour you know that's that's savings um and, you know just being able to work on stuff like that you know and and make little tweaks you know if you're using a job shop you make a little tweak in a mold it might be a month before you get you know before you get your your tool back for just a five minute change uh, from a manufacturer's point of view, a good injection mold is going to cost you anywhere from seventy to one hundred thousand dollars per SKU. Wow! So and we just talked about how many SKUs, how many different guns yeah. come out every year. So. Yeah. So and it's not speed to market is slow, versus we can cut a tool and be in production in thirty days from start to finish. How many colors are you currently stocking, or what's your normal color count? So. Every SKU, if you were to put every possible color combination together per SKU, it's about 250,000. 
Oh, yeah. wow. You know, this $5,000 gun, you put it in this boring black holster, like, where's the fun in that? So we give you the ability to, you know, because of the process, we can give you the ability to have, you know, all kinds of cool colors match your scheme, you know. Gotcha. We run 150 inches a minute at uh, 12,500 12, RPMs. This will run 24,000 RPMs. Um, on our dual air, we run um, 90 inches a minute and um just to get a cleaner cut or yeah it's just a little stiffer so i mean you're 160 thousandths of plastic so we run 90 inches a minute um and we're running uh 12 uh 12,500 rpms and that was the magic number to get the chips where we wanted you know we weren't we weren't uh it up in the we were rolling chips in plastic you know like in plastic chips you want the chips to be rolled when gotcha. it cuts you don't want them to be flat. If they're flat, you're too fast or it's not peeling it off. And right. if you run it flat, you, if you're too fast, what happens is you're reloading the end mill and it causes friction because it's trying to clear it. And so we just found with the thicker stuff that that was, that was a better, uh, better solution. So the beauty of it is if I go down, and now I've had this machine for five years, almost five years, um if it goes down within 24 hours i will have my parts so i don't have long down times nice um and the way we set our machines up is everything can go back and forth this is primarily tooling over here but i can run production if i need to so i have no single point of failure you know nice. we make a level three or a level two holster that has a hood on it um pistol pouches ar pouches uh mp5 if it has a magazine, uh, there's a few things we don't make, but they're very far and few between. We make shooting belts, so for competition, we make a belt that's a ratchet system. So we've got a bunch of colors. Red's super popular for us. Um, so, and it has a ratchet on it. So when you've got a lot of gear, um, the ratchet uh, allows you to get it on. So you can tighten this up when you put it on, get it as tight as you want. So when you're, when you're actually shooting, you want nothing to move as little as possible. Um, and so then, I need that after Thanksgiving dinner. Yes, yes, 100%, <laughs> right? So the biggest thing is, you know, when you're shooting three gun or you're shooting uh, competition, you have a lot of mags, a lot of weight. So the weight distribution that this gives you takes the weight off your hips. Uh, you. Gets the weight up off your hips. Um, it's gonna let you be fresher longer throughout the day. And I want one from 100,000, that customer to have the same experience. You know, you can get all kinds of colors. I mean, you can do, you know, orange and black. You can do, uh, you know, red. You can do, I mean, just, so that's why this virtually on demand, you know, uh, inventory works for us. None of it's hard. You just have to actually do it. Uh. So we have the actual guns um, and that's, you know, how we fit test. That's how we work. So we'll get it fit, you know, but we're going to actually load the gun. We're going to put a full magazine, 147 grain, you know, if it's a nine millimeter, 147 grain rounds, and we're going to look at weight distribution. We're going to look at that, how it hangs. So we're going to take video of you walking. We're going to take video of you standing. We're going to take video of you drawing. And we're going to look at how the gun presents, how you, how accessible the gun is, if it's concealment. Um, you know, because the weight and tilt factor, uh, you want the gun. So like using this range as an example, ideally you want the gun as straight up and down all the time as possible. Um, when you go to draw, the most important part of shooting accurately under speed is a solid grip. Um, you don't have time to readjust the grip, right? So, um, that starts, I mean, that can shape how an entire target presentation, how you shoot. If you don't have the gun gripped right, you're not gonna shoot straight. So that's why we look at all of those things and we go, okay, if the gun is heavy and it's hanging like this, then we need to go in and we need to push the bottom out and we'll go in an angle. You know, it might be as simple as a five degree angle um, that we put in, but when it mounts, we're ensuring that when it's loaded, you're getting the best possible presentation. I can't fix your draw, 
but I can give you the I can give you a solid place to start. Sure. You know, we're looking at that and we're saying so on the holster side, every gun has a different weight. You know, that sort of thing. Uh, we're looking at where the safeties are, where the mag releases are. Um, you know, you don't want to wear the holster and it accidentally activate the mag release, and then yeah. you have to go get in a gunfight and your mag falls out when you draw. You yeah. know, like those are the things that would be bad. Yeah, that's a bad day. <laughs> um, if you're on the worst day of your life and you're defending yourself or your family, you don't, you can't afford, mis there's no mistakes. I mean, you're literally putting, somebody's putting their life or their family's life in your hands. So you want to make sure that that presents well. You want to make sure the gun isn't accidentally dropping the mag. It's not turning the safety on or off, you know, if it has one. Things like that, that little things that we try to think about, you know, and, and produce so that on your worst day of your life, you at least have the best chance of winning. Well, I hope you've learned some things today from this shop tour. I know I did. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Have you ever made a holster? I know their process is far better in quality than bending over some Kydex in the garage like I thought it was. Thanks, Adam, for letting us peek behind the curtain. Until next time, you guys get out in the shop and make something cool.